Hi everybody, welcome to chapter four. I was quite ambivalent about doing a video, but I think it may help us to remember at least. It's very simple. Okay, so we're going to run through it as a memory aid. So let's look, let's look at the self. We are going to be looking at self-presentation and self-knowledge, personal versus social identity, influence of situations and other people, self-awareness and possible selves, self-control, self-esteem, social comparison, self-serving biases, some of them, emotional, cognitive and behavioral impact of prejudice. So when you draw on the UNISA Facebook group to um, to find out what we might be tested on. What is that called? Social capital. When we try to present ourselves to others as having positive attributes, how clever, how beautiful, how handsome, how athletic, self-promotion. How we get other people to verify the view we have of ourselves. View, perspective, verification. Yes, I'm wonderful. Self-verification perspective. Getting others to like us by flattering them. Ingratiation. Putting ourselves down and implying we are not as good as someone else in order to make feel good or in order to um, for other purposes so depreciation dresses how we respond when our group identity is salient so this is for intergroup comparisons uh, with intergroup comparisons we like to associate with people who are succeeding or well viewed. So this is the social identity theory. Okay. When we think of ourselves on a personal level, we're unique individuals. Um, in a social context, we're part of a group. This is the personal versus the social identity continuum. Okay, when you notice something because it's relevant, it's salient. When you judge people inside your group, it's intra, intra group comparisons. When you judge other groups, it is going to be inter group comparisons. Okay, in the marshmallow test, what this young boy is suffering from and which he may or may not overcome is the exhaustion of using willpower. Ego depletion. When you have feelings about yourself that are not at the forefront of your mind and your awareness, it is called implicit self-esteem as opposed to explicit self-esteem that you can report and find within yourself. Why do we compare ourselves to others? Often because it's the only way to work out how we are performing and how we are and how to evaluate ourselves. And this is called social comparison theory. Okay, on an individual level, we want to look good. One way to do that is to put yourself next to someone who does not look as good as you do. And this would be a way of maintaining your self-esteem and therefore it is called the self-evaluation maintenance model. Okay, this is a bias. Most people, in fact, almost all people, see themselves as above average on most things, which is scientifically impossible. And it's called the above average effect. OK, 
Okay, what is this lady demonstrating? She is showing us the self-evaluation maintenance model. Okay, self-evaluation maintenance model has the opposite behavior to social identity theory because in the self-evaluation maintenance model, we move closer to others who make us look good by comparison. In the social identity theory, we move closer to others that make us good look, look good by association, okay, because we have a social identity with them. Okay. Um, when you think you're going to be judged just for being white or woman or old or whatever, this is called a stereotype threat. When you assume other people are going to be judging you just because you're white or woman or old or whatever, this is called stigma consciousness. Let's run through a few more points. Let's look at self-presentation and self-knowledge. Self-presentation. We promote ourselves. We want others to agree with how we see ourselves, self-verification. We praise others to win favor, ingratiation. We may put ourselves down uh, for various social reasons, self-depreciation. Oh, it's just a small cake. It's a little too dry. Okay, cyberspace is where a lot of this plays out, especially during COVID. Okay. How do we get other people to agree with ourselves? Maybe that addresses these processes. Self-verification perspective. self-knowledge. Introspection can be misleading because of the problem of implicit um, self-esteem and other things, and also because of our inbuilt biases. But one way around this is with a thought experiment. If you imagine seeing yourself from the outside, you can often see yourself more clearly because this bypasses the actor-observer effect to some extent. You're seeing your traits rather than the situation. Looking at personal versus social identity, which is more salient, the personal or the group identity. Do you remember what that's called? It's called the social identity theory. let's look at the influence of situations and of other people. How do others see you? When others see you negatively, you might change your behavior to change how they see you. But if you can't change, you may claim that identity, that difference is an identity marker. Self-awareness and possible self. Let's look at possible selves. When we're thinking about ourselves in an evaluatory way, we compare ourselves with future possible selves, both positive and negative. And we work towards the possible, possible positive selves, and we fear the negative possible selves. We don't want to land up on the street. We want to be successful. Either we can achieve change or we can't. And this is a positive feedback loop of self-esteem and self-evaluation. Okay, because either we're succeeding and our self-esteem and self-efficacy goes up, or we're failing and our self-esteem and self-efficacy are going down in a positive feedback loop. It's all about self-evaluation. Self-awareness is one kind of self-evaluation. So we assess ourselves by our hairstyles, achievements, etc., comparing ourselves with other people, discovering how other people evaluate us, okay? Self-efficacy. This is the belief you can achieve your goals. So we may experience mastery or failure. We may observe other people succeed or fail. So our self-efficacy is relative to others. And we can be persuaded that we can or can't succeed by others. Okay, 
Okay, let's look at a little cluster now. Self-control, self-esteem, social comparison, and self-serving biases. Right, when you are sticking to a difficult program, yes, how is very important, but so is why. You need to start with why. Why is about the abstract and the high level of self-control, and the how is about the concrete and low level of self-control. It doesn't relate directly to your sense of self, how you go about a difficult program. Self-esteem is the overall attitude towards yourself. It's affected by life events and in turn affects resilience to adverse events. It's easily nudged up or down, so it's quite fluid. I avert all subliminal influences all the time. Parental nurture raises and overprotection lowers self-esteem. Low is associated with poor performance, low social status, drug addiction, and so on. High is associated with narcissism, bullying, and increased aggression. Gender differences and other stereotyping directly affects self-esteem, and this can be measured. Social comparison. We assess ourselves by looking at others. Why? Because it's often the only way we can. We have downward social comparison with people we see as less than us and upward with people that we see as more than us. We want to see ourselves positively rather than accurately. And it's usually relative to in-group others, not out other groups. And we always have self-serving biases, which we apply both to ourselves and to the group that we are part of, our reference group or in group. Prejudice and the self affects us emotionally, cognitively, and behaviorally. How it affects us depends on whether it is stable over time or whether it's a once-off incident. Emotionally, we are more affected by situationally global, stable, and more personal prejudices. Cognitively, being associated with a negative stereotype can actually affect your learning and memory very directly, like your performance in the UNISA exam, for example. Behaviorally, stereotype threats cause us to underperform possibly via the intermediary of feelings of anxiety, which would be implicit anxiety more than explicit, actually, which is interesting. Okay, and that is that. I hope it helps you remember the details. Please like, subscribe, and share. And I will do a video on chapter five soon.